Good afternoon and receive my warm welcome to this webinar about the application of wireless sensor networks to aquaculture. I am trying to give uh, you a general view about the history of the aquaculture, the market nowadays, and what I think are the guidelines for the future. My name is Javier Gavas. I am the sales area manager for agriculture and small water in, in Asia and Libelium. Let's start with a short history uh, about the aquaculture. It's uh, really difficult to say when the aquaculture started, but uh, the first evidence uh, we have are in the ancient Egypt during the fifth dynasty, uh, 2,500 years before Christ, that it makes uh, something like uh, 4,500 years ago. The Nile is a river with a very regular flow and the Egyptians built up some irrigation channels. They use these channels uh, not only for, for the irrigation, but also for growing fishes, African tilapia in this case. They are still a big producer of farmed fish today. More than 2% of the farmed fish in the world come from Egypt. The arable land was very rare in ancient Egypt and, uh, and the people were starving. So farming fish was a good solution for solving the alimentary security of the empire. They grew tilapia and Nile carps. Both are vegetarian fishes that makes uh, the grow easier. Uh, just around the corner, I, I mean in the area where today is Guatemala, uh, 12,000 kilometers away, the Maya civilization grew American tilapia using the irrigation channels around 2,200 uh, years before Christ. It's just a coincidence more between these two empires, the pyramids, the geographic writing, the irrigation channel, and now the fish farming too. In some countries in Asia, oyster farming was known in, in 1400 before Christ. In 475 after Christ, we find the first documents about the, the regulation and the techniques of the aquaculture in China, wrote by, by the governor Fan Li. Uh, the, the Chinese people believe in, in, in fate. Uh, they think that uh, your fate is related to your birth or, your, or the lines of your hand or even your name. So the governor is, na is uh, named uh, Fan Li. Fan is food in Chinese and Li is carp in Chinese. So if your name is Fan Li, you must uh, write something about the, about the carps and the, and the food, of course. In Europe, the history is uh, not very well known also, but uh, I, don't, I don't want to get bored you with, uh, with more data. But uh, anyway, Aristotle in Greece uh, talked about the oysters growing. The Imperial Tiberius in the Roman Empire had uh, an oyster pond for himself in, in Iberia, that uh, today is uh, Spain and, and Portugal. The King Reses Binto in the, uh, century number, in the 7th century builds uh, the first fish farms. In the 13th century, the monasteries grow truits uh, all around Europe. And in the 19th century in Europe was widely accepted that you can grow fishes in the same way that you are growing vegetables. In 2015, so for for first time, the amount of consumed uh, fish, uh, farmed fish was higher than the wild fish. And the consumption per capita passed uh, the barrier of uh, 20 kilograms a year. In some countries, the, the consumption is more than 80 years. We are talking about uh, 20 kilograms a year uh, as an average in, in the world. Uh, fishing some specimens will be forbidden in short. And uh, in some countries, farmed fishes are the most important product for the exportation. So uh, fish farming has two main advantages. This is it's the only way nowadays of obtaining animal proteins under one American dollar per kilogram. And fish farming has the best ratio between food given and food of tiny. I mean, if you buy 1,200 kilograms of fish food, you obtain up to 1,000 kilograms of fish. And you need 16 kilograms of cereals for obtaining just a kilogram of, of beef. So the ratio is, uh, is quite good. Uh, United Nations Agency for Food is uh, really interested and concerned on the main challenges of the aquaculture. The sustainable food for fishes is the first and the most important challenge. Now we are fishing low quality fishes like mackerel or sardines 
for making processes food for the for the farmed fishes this is a nonsense you have fish for producing more fishes another concern is the control of the waste wasted water and dead fishes and beside the control of the scapis the scapis are not only related to the alien specimens if you are growing some alien specimen in a, in a portion of sea or in a lake and you have some escapees you can have some ecological problems but it also for the alien illness some uh, illness uh, only appear in the farmed fish and not in the wild fishes you can make a, a an illness transfer from from the farm to the to the wild mm, anyway increasing the productivity by hectare is another uh, challenge uh, at this moment, uh, the, the productivity is around uh, 20,000 kilograms per hectare, and, and one of the challenges is, uh, is making this, pr this uh, productivity higher. Uh, the number of uh, specimens alive at the end of the growth is, uh, is uh, important. Now it's from 60 to 65 percent of the animals, and increasing the productivity by cutting uh, the fixed cost. This is the cost structure in an aquaculture uh, business. 40% uh, uh, of the turnover is uh, for the cost and 60% is, is the profit. So it's a quite profitable activity. And uh, the costs are like a 38 to, to, to 40% as a fixed uh, cost and 60% around of variable cost. Of this uh, cost, the 48% of the total cost of growing fishes is, is, uh, is the food. The principal concern of the agricultural specialist uh, is guaranteeing the health of the animals. Thousands and thousands of animals are lost in every growth process. So, I mean, if you put uh, 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 some, uh, thousand, 1,000 uh, small animals at the beginning of the, of the growth period, you can take only 600 to 650 uh, animals alive at the end of the, of the, of the period. So, it's a, a really important really important uh, to have uh, a, a total control of the quality of the water for reducing this, these losses. Monitoring the water quality can help you to reduce the losses by a 40% or even more. In the best practice catalog, you can find that the principal parameters of the water must be controlled at least uh, twice a day. But the, the risk of some of the most important uh, diseases can be easily forecasted, but just monitoring the physical parameters of the water. The models of, of uh, forecasting or the models of monitorization can be available easily from the governmental agencies in your country. In some countries, this is not only a problem, it's a national concern. Just think about countries where one, the, the most important or one of the most important uh, products for exports, for exportation is uh, farmed fish or shrimps or crabs or whatever like uh, i'm thinking of uh, vietnam or ecuador or e even china and uh, th this is not only a problem it's a national concern the physical parameters temperature dissolved oxygen electroconductivity and ph give us the idea of the water status but uh, not only a general idea a very deep idea about the water quality because any chemical alteration will be reflected immediately on the physical parameters nitrites nitrates and ammonia come from this composition of the organic material the plants in the phone the rest of the food dead fishes etc and depending on the amount of oxygen the ph and the temperature these detritus are toxic or not even you can forecast the behavior of the nitrogen in the very next hours, knowing exactly those parameters you can see in this slide. The physical parameters, temperature, dissolved oxygen, electroconductivity and pH, and the most important chemical parameters that are the, the related to the nitrogen, that are the nitrates, the nitrates and the ammonia. Monitoring online is cheaper and easier, is more accurate is independent on the worker skills some alerts and triggers can be programmable easily the data storage is easy and the construction of forecasting and models is easy too 
no human presence is required. All the data can be centralized. Just think about a company that manages different fish farms, even in different, not only in different areas, but even in, in some different countries. We have some customers that are based in Indonesia and they have, uh, for example, fish farms in Indonesia, in Thailand, in, uh, in, the, in Malaysia, anywhere in the area, and sometimes even out of the area. So all the data can be centralized and can be analyzed in the, in the central facilities of the company. In some countries, monitoring the water quality and guaranteeing the animal's health will be mandatory. This is not only a good idea, this should be mandatory. Let's go deeply uh, to a case study we have developed in the Mekong Delta in Vietnam with the help of our distributor PHA distribution that is our distributor in, in, in Vietnam. The business case is uh, one of the most powerful in the IoT business. Uh, some verified data we take from this case study. The losses of the animals cut off by 35% minimum. The improvement of the fish meat quality, controlling the ammonia, you can avoid some smells on the meat and some low quality of the meal. Uh, we have a, a cut on the cleaning cost and also on the medicines cost, the antibiotics, etc. The turnover increased by 20% and the fish coming from this installation becomes more competitive in, in foreign markets. They are monitoring the intake of uh, water, only the physical parameters. The water comes directly from the Mekong River without uh, any previous uh, treatment. Here you can see some views of the project in, in Mekong Delta. Uh, as you can see, they are mounting some monitoring equips over uh, a small vessel. The vessel allows to, to monitor the water quality in, in different points in, uh, in a very cost-effective way. The main equipe of plug and sense is uh, the protection the protection index, the IP is IP65. For assuring the tightness and avoiding any problem with water, they install the, the plug and sense inside a polyester cabinet. You cannot use, of course, a metallic cabinet for avoiding problems with the, with the radio transmission. Fishes uh, usually beat the wires. That's why our recommendation is to include the, the sensors inside a cage, a metallic cage. This cage allows the water to flow, but that doesn't allow the fishes uh, to beat the wires. The wires are protected also with, uh, with a plastic cover and fixed to a metallic guide. You need to calibrate the sensors once a month in, in this case. And every time, please, uh, don't forget to clean the sensor with fresh water and clean the cage for avoiding algae, dirtiness, uh, etc. Of course, always be sure that the, the batteries are at full charge uh, before placing on site is uh, really important. And now you are ready for receiving the data and showing on the dashboard. You can analyze the variation of the principal parameters of the water and, and the relation between them. It's, it's quite complicated, but it follows known patterns. When the temperature rises, the pH goes down. Uh, when the pH uh, goes down, some changes appear on the behavior of the nitrogen solved. Some nitrates become ammonia that can become even toxic. So the, the behavior of the dissolved oxygen is also related to the temperature and the pH. Uh, so really you are the, the, the master of an ecosystem. And your goal is the, to make that ecosystem work in the way uh, that uh, is the best for the fishes to grow, not only well, but also for growing faster. Another interesting uh, case study you can find in our website is uh, developed, uh, has been developed in, in Iran in the, in the last months. We are controlling the, the water quality in uh, carp uh, fish farms in, in Iran, uh, our partner or distributor in Iran, Afarinesh Shamane Mer Engineering, uh, has uh, developed the project with our help. The, the, the aim of the project is the reduction of the casualties, the, the animal lost by 30% and, and increasing the, the productivity. They have constructed uh, uh, something like a, like a polyethylene buoy and they have fixed uh, the two plug and sense with uh, small water and small water ions 
to this wall and uh, with this they are monitoring the, the 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 quality in the fish farm in this in this case the the fish farm is uh, is developed over a natural lake there are some other interesting uh, options we are working in from my point of view maybe is the the most sustainable and uh, and the profitable option for the aquaculture that is the aquaponic system basically it's an hydroponic installation uh, and a fish farm but all together where uh, some vegetables help you to clean the water of your fish farm what is a poison for the fishes is the main nutrient of the plants and and so you cut off the cost of cleaning and filtering the water sometimes by 30 or even 40 percent and besides, you can sell the vegetables, so you have a, a, a double uh, profit income. The vegetables that they usually uh, grow uh, in, a, in an hydroponic system in four weeks, you can get in just uh, three weeks because uh, you are giving an extra nutrient that is the nitrogen uh, coming from the, from the fishes. This is another view of uh, Japanese carp's uh, installation in Singapore where distributor Travis Technology is uh, working right now. In the case of uh, aquaponics, uh, we need to monitor the usual parameters, um, physical, like uh, temperature, dissolved oxygen, electroconductivity, and pH, as usual, and the chemical parameters, and not only the, the nitrogen-related, that uh, nitrites, nitrates, uh, ammonia, but also sometimes they need to monitor the calcium for knowing the hardness of the water, the magnesium, and the potassium, because uh, sometimes they need to, to, to add uh, some some of these uh, nutrients to the to the water for the benefit of the of the plants what are the future trends is uh, it's not really very difficult to know the future of the aquaculture the future of the aquaculture is of course uh, the rising demand of uh, farmed fish uh, will increase the number of installations and the necessity of improving the the existing farms and now we are the consumption of fish farm the, in the in the world is uh, 52 53 person against uh, 47 48 person of a wild fish and in the very next uh, 20 years the trend is uh, to grow up to 20 person of wild fish 80 person of farmed fish so you can understand that the the business of uh, fish farming will grow in an incredible way all over the world around so the cost of the food must be improved and not only improved but also uh, must be sustainable and now we understand that uh, uh, taking wild fish uh, as uh, like a mackerel or sardines for feeding farmed fish is not a good idea so we need to improve the this uh, this uh, aspect of the of the business um, the future from from my point of view uh, of the, is uh, is the behavior analytics so the food is given to the fishes only in the right moment but they're not guessing this moment but uh, analyzing the behavior of the fishes so we will give them the food only when they are really hungry and when they will take everything and will take a good profit of this investment in in food so we can minimize the wasted food and the general waste too so it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, minimizing the waste, uh, the waste is uh, is one of the main goals of the future of the fish farm. Uh, besides, we need to monitor exactly the the quality of the water, not only for assuring the quality of the final product, but uh, also for improving the business of the of the farmer. Uh, from my experience, there are a lot of opportunities in this market, in Europe, in America, in Asia, anywhere in the world. The business case is uh, really powerful and or equips uh, are nowadays, as far as I know, the most uh, cost-effective solution in the market right now. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Here you have uh, the, uh, the data for our contact uh, or my direct uh, email address, the general address of the company. Now is the moment for opening uh, our chat um, for, the, for the questions uh, and answer. Uh, please uh, feel free to uh, to contact us uh, to make uh, your uh, your questions and we will try to to give you our answer thank you so uh, i i want to to make uh, the, because uh, the, there are a lot of people interested in the in the 
in the process of cleaning and calibrating the sensors. I want uh, to give you some, some general ideas. First of all, uh, the main equip is plug and sense. Plug and sense is a sensors hub. This is the device with the communication platform and the sensors platform for you to connect the sensors and send in the data taken by the sensors to the cloud. Uh, you must think of the sensors not as the part of the equip, but uh, as uh, exactly in the same way that you think uh, of the wheels or the oil in your car. Every 10,000 kilometers you need to exchange the oil and every 30,000 or 40,000 kilometers you need to exchange the wheels. In the same way, with a measurement equip, you need to exchange the sensors for warranting that uh, you are receiving the right data in the right moment. The more often you uh, clean and calibrate the sensors, the more accurate are the data you are, you are uh, taking from the sensors. It's so easy to, to understand. So, uh, how often? How often is depending on the quality of the water. If you are working in a really dirty uh, river, like uh, the Mekong, uh, where we have uh, seen on the on the example we have uh, sh shown in Vietnam, if you are working in a very dirty river, you need to clean at least uh, once every week. You need to clean and to calibrate the sensors. If you are working with uh, the almost drinking water in a lake in the mountain where the water is very clean, etc., you need to, to calibrate maybe every two weeks, three weeks, even four weeks. Exchanging the, the, the sensors every year if you are working with uh, salted water and exchanging the sensor every one year and a half, two years if you are working with, with fresh water. Uh, we still don't have uh, auto cleaning system for the sensors. We are uh, working with uh, sensors that you must uh, clean and calibrate manually. The price of a sensor, the price of a sensor with auto calibration, with auto cleaning and so on, is over 10,000 or 2,000 or 12, or 12,000 American dollars. So we are uh, talking about completely different products and completely different price levels. I hope you will understand this is, uh, this is important. So the expected life of uh, a probe is, is this one, one year in salted water and roughly two years in fresh water, and the cleaning and calibration uh, process must be made at least once every month. If the water is really, really dirty, like in some rivers or in some areas, you must uh, clean and calibrate more often. So uh, another interesting question has been uh, posed by Kenny that is asking if you can connect ammonia sensor to the smart water device. And this is important to understand that if you go to our guide or our catalog, you can see we have uh, two different uh, families of uh, products related to smart water. One is smart water itself for monitoring the, the, the physical parameters of the water. Here you can connect turbidity, uh, temperature of course, conductivity, pH, dissolved oxygen, and some other. And the other uh, family is uh, related to ions, where you can determine the chemical composition of the water. You cannot mix the sensors of chemical uh, composition with the sensors of the physical characteristics, because uh, the system uh, of works of uh, this uh, kind of sensor are completely different and are completely uh, the, the, the boards inside are completely different and you cannot mix from one device to, to, to the other. Uh, an another answer for Andreas, uh, not so Polos, sorry, my Greek is not, is not very well. Uh, he said, hi, can we apply the mention technology in an open sea cage fish farm? Of course you can. There's not any problem for working in the in salted water. The only problem is that the life of the sensors will be shorter. Anyway, this is a, a real example where monitoring the water quality online is very much better idea than monitoring uh, manually because monitoring manually at the end of the uh, of the day means nobody will monitor because uh, going to an open cage in the middle of nowhere in the sea is uh, really difficult so it's a good idea to monitor online in the in the sea uh, how about the range of the wireless transmission it's depending on the on the on the radio protocol or the communication protocol you are using for example 
if you have a 4G or 3G or 2G coverage, you are using cell phone communication and you can communicate without any problem. If you are e using uh, LoRaWAN, in the area is, uh, there's a service of LoRaWAN and we have LoRaWAN ready in this area, you can uh, communicate between the node and the, and the base station in a range of uh, hopefully 18, 20, even 25 kilometers. If you are using uh, 868 or 900 megahertz, you can communicate up to 7, 8 kilometers. If you are using 802, 15, 4, you are communicating 3, 4 kilometers. So, depending on the on the distance you need between the nodes and the base station or the gateway, you can choose another one protocol of communication or, or the other. Uh, you can use, uh, it's a, an answer for John James Quintero, uh, you can use this solution for sending the data to any cloud. We are completely agnostic in this uh, in this aspect. You can send the, the 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 information coming from the sensors to any cloud in the in the market. John Carter, is there any interface for sensors that you do not provide a standard uh, 24 volts industrial sensor 420? Yes, we have a device where you can connect uh, any sensor. 420 milliamps. The maximum number to connect is four sensors simultaneously to one plug and sense device. Uh, please send us an email and we will uh, revert to you with the, with all the uh, technical information, a quotation that you need, etc. Uh, for PP271, is the data transmitted permanently like a real time or in fixed time intervals? Uh, this is interesting also. Wireless communication is uh, not designed for real-time communication. It's not designed for having the, the measure every second or every millisecond. The idea is to, to, send the, 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 to send the information every some minutes, every 20, every 30, every uh, 45, one hour. So you have uh, now the best practice of the fish farming said that you need to monitor the water quality at least twice every day. Usually, our customers are monitoring 48 times every day. They are monitoring every 30 times. But uh, as the device is completely programmable, you only need to, pro to, to program exactly the number of times every day or the number of, uh, I wanted this, uh, uh, this measure to be made every 30 minutes, every 30 minutes in the day and every 20 minutes in the, in the night. So, uh, our time is uh, unfortunately finishing. Uh, my suggestion is that uh, you can send your, your questions and your queries to our general email, sales at libelium.com, and we will be so happy to, to, to give you an answer and to, to give you all the support needed. Thank you very much.